Hello and welcome back to Chat UTD. It's been a while. What have we missed? First and foremost, Eric Ten Hag has signed the contract extension that was, I think, pretty much on the table unless he was sacked. So it's it's not a new contract. It's one that was there anyway. I think he remains under review or he remains under he remains under assessment and a lot of scrutiny. And the news that Gary Southgate has left the England job adds to that because as outlandish as United fans might find it, there is a strong, strong rumour that Ineos likes Southgate, and particularly with the Ashworth link, that he would be a contender and he's now available, which I think adds a, a crucial dynamic to all of this, really. And I think he's got a really tough job on his hands, Ten Hag, because this new structure, this proper structure that people are talking about, it isn't in place because Ineos have been too slow to get the people in position that need to be in position so that this new structure <clears throat> won't be embedded and won't be established until next summer at the earliest, really. So he's going to continue, by and large, to work under the constraints of what he's been working under for the first two years. Uh, I think, reading between the lines, it's going to be largely the same squad. Um, I think some of the key, key people that need to leave in terms of their influence on the others, their, their toxic influence, will stay. And it's a big ask to get more out of this group because they've proved themselves consistently, the majority of them anyway, to be incapable of having the physical, emotional, mental, psychological wherewithal to play for a club like Man United. And for some of them, they've consistently showed that over a period of time and they keep surviving. So I think that's really difficult for Ten Hag. If he wins a trophy and gets us top four, top three this season, he deserves a two, three, four year contract because he'll have swam the channel. Now, maybe he might think, I'll show you, because the way in your street it wasn't great. And there's a few people saying, where's his pride? You know, like, he, should he not have just walked away? But he's not going to do that. It's Man United. He's been here two years. He ain't going to get the chance to do it again at any point if he walked away. He's got a good rapport with the fans. The vast majority of the, of the, Certainly the match-going fans, I think, have his back. He understands United, feel like he gets it. Um, so he's not gonna he's not gonna want to walk away. But but the the cloud just hangs over him. I think he's not in Yossi's guy. That's evident by the fact that we're interviewing other people. And the Southgate thing, as outlandish as I said that we might think it is, is there in the background, and that doesn't help him either. So it's a tough one for him. Um, great news that Rude is back at the club. For me personally, one of my favourite ever United players, and I love the guy. Great to see him back as an assistant coach. Some suggestion that at some point the idea is that he and the other guy from Go Ahead Eagles, is it Rene Hake, are going to be the number one and number two at United if Tenag was to leave. I think that's a bit of a leap. You know, Rude, as much as I love him, has got no credentials to manage Man United other than the fact he's played for us and has a lovely connection with the fans and everything, but that's a bit Solskjaer-y. So, um, I can't really imagine that that will happen. That said, he's turned down the top job at Burnley to be an assistant at United, so maybe he does think there's a little sneaky backdoor route in there as, as the top guy. I was thinking before the Southgate news that if Ineos choose to pull the plug on Ten Hag at some point this season, which would not surprise me in the least, We've got a ready-made interim that at the very least would be very popular with the fans. But you've also got Southgate there waiting in the wings unless he takes another job. And unless the Southgate stuff's just bullshit, which it might well be. Maybe Ineos have got no intention of ever appointing Gary Southgate, but that goes against the noise that we've heard. So all interesting stuff. I think that it's interesting to see the dynamics of the coaching staff because... Uh, Ten Hag's long-term assistant has left, but we've still got McLaren, we've still got other less high-profile coaches, and now we've got Rude and uh, Rene Hake. And there's a lot of voices in there, but there's a lot of characters in there. How do you mix all those together? You know, Rude's not a shrinking violet. This Rene Hake, by all accounts, is a right character. Ten Hag's voice has got to be the loudest and most decisive. Uh, so, yeah interesting to see how that all pans out and it's it's similar in the boardroom you know um I, sh I shouldn't neglect to say that since i've done my last proper united video ashworth has been um 
confirmed as being part of the club now and, and obviously we've got Barada and then um, this guy Christopher Vival, I think his name is, um, has been brought in as a short term interim, well I think he said sporting director but when I read about him it's he's a bit of a recruitment specialist and I don't really understand that because Ashworth there now, if Ashworth wasn't there till Christmas I could understand why you'd need to do that but maybe it's just to kind of get us over the line this summer, maybe use his expertise, perhaps they feel he's got expertise that other people that are there haven't got but again it's a very busy football board I was crying out for a football board I have been for five years but we've gone from having the parasites and not really anything and then the coaching staff to the parasites Jim Ratcliffe Brailsford's in there somewhere Jean-Claude Blanc's in there somewhere um, Ashworth Barada Wilcox Vivelle it's a lot of people and I think that'll probably be streamlined over the next few years but it's a lot of people to kind of coordinate ideas and whatnot and obviously those gremlins still at the top of the club unfortunately I'm sure we'll still be having the two penny with in some way or other so this is all interesting stuff to keep your eye on let's look at incomings the only confirmed incoming so far is Joshua Zerke um, 23 year old Dutch international striker six foot three or four I think he is big strong lad I think he's quite quick quite an interesting profile of player because my assumption was United were going to go one or two ways with a striker this summer. They were going to go for a, a big main man name, if they could get one cheap enough, maybe an Ivan Tony or something like that. And then Hoyland, which is crazy as he costs £72 million, pounds, Hoyland, but, but would maybe have the chance to do what we would probably would have preferred him to do last year, which was learn his craft, but we didn't have enough money to buy a, an established striker, so he had to just front up and do it on his own that that would be the option, probably the least likely option, or that we would get like maybe a 31, 32 year old who didn't cost a lot of money and was not happy to sit on the bench, but would understand and would almost do a job share, for want of a better expression, with Hoyland. Whereas this is a player of a very similar profile, similar age, has come from Bologna, similar club to the one that Hoyland came from in Atalanta, similar backgrounds in, in the game, in terms of what they've had done at the age they're at. I think quite similar qualities to some degree without knowing loads about it and it's unusual for a big club with a position like striker to have two players who have very similar attributes so are we going to play two up front I doubt it is one of them going to drop deeper and one of them be the target man I doubt it so it looks like it's going to be a straight shootout between the two of them Maybe Hoyland would, would just edge ahead in that because of what he did last season. But um, exciting, but, but interesting just to see that as a dynamic, really. And then not a signing, but um, Evans has signed a one-year deal. Again, Johnny Evans, I think that speaks to the lack of finance. We've got some fantasists reckon we're going to get three centre-backs this summer. There's absolutely no chance I think we'll get one. Um, and they haven't got any money, so it's a cheap cost cutting exercise, money saving exercise should I say and and makes sense, did well last year probably a really good influence around the young lads probably will take some, probably a bit of a, a coaching role as well I would have thought we've got enough though haven't we I suppose but it makes sense but again I just think we're in, we're in huge trouble financially and it, it just for me is symbolic that we haven't got what we need in place to do the stuff we need to do this summer and we're having to make decisions like that and then a really worrying one, Sancho being reintegrated into the squad is a massive concern because he flies in the face of everything in Yoss have said that they're going to try to do. They want to bring standards, they want to bring small habits that are consistent and, and positive, they want a culture, they want an ethos, they want elite performance, elite mentality. This dude's the complete opposite of all of that. And in three years he's done very little on the pitch and proved himself to be nothing but an absolute troublemaker. One that I think we all, two or three months ago, would have said, he's gone. No chances he's staying. And this is echoes of the past. How many times have the Glazers suggested something outlandish, stupid, goes against everything we need, and then it's gone quiet for a while, and we've all gone, no, they won't do that. And then dust settles, and they do whatever that thing is. And this this strikes me as that, really. Uh it just 
if he stays, I have to say, the stuff that Ineos have said when they first came in is nothing but a sales manifesto. And it's bullshit. So I hope what's going on here is that they're playing it smart in that they're trying to keep his value high by saying we're not desperate to sell him he's reintegrated into our squad now and we can charge a decent price for someone to come in but i'm not sure that's what's happening and i'd be absolutely appalled if he stays at united he shouldn't ever play for man united again and then i don't really get into rumor but it's been said that delict is close but then i was reading today that is it yoro the other fella is is more likely delict is red flags for me because for two reasons. Last season, he had recurring knee injuries. That's a key word, recurring knee injuries. If you have recurring knee injuries, that's not the type of thing that you just have once. It, it continues to plague you. Knees don't tend to just get better. So that's a worry. Um, and also the fact that, again, it's echoes of the past and red flags in that it's a player that we wanted three or four years ago. He didn't want to come to us, so he went from Ajax to Juve. I don't blame him for not wanting to come to us, but he didn't want to then. Then shortly after being at Juve, he left to go to Bayern Munich. And again, my understanding is we were interested in him. He didn't want to come to us. Again, don't blame him, but he didn't. He went to, to Bayern Munich. He has a season played by injuries. He loses his place in both the club and national team. And all of a sudden which mugs are around that would want me. Ah, oh, Man United, I'll go and play for them. And I'm sure if he signed, we'd hear all the, I've supported them since I was a kid. Uh, this, you know, Nemanja Vidic was my hero and he'll, he'll be like putting selfies on the pitch and ringing his mum and, and all that type of bullshit that we get when players sign. But ultimately, it's sloppy thirds because he did, he's turned us down twice. I want us to go and blaze our own trail. Go and get a Yoro or a Branthwaite or a Tadebo. Someone that we've been working on for the last two or three months within the new regime, which indicates something new. We're just going over all ground trying to get a Delict if we get him. Good player and 24, so you know, could resurrect his career at United, could have the best years of his career at United. And if we got him three years ago, I'd be cock a hoop. But those two things concern me sloppy thirds and recurring knee injuries. And what do we suffer most with last season? Injuries. So. Red flags everywhere for me on that one. I'd prefer to go for the other fellow without knowing too much about him. Um, in terms of exits, so far, only Willy Kambala, um, if I said that right. Young, talented lad. 10 million, I think, we got for him. Not a lot, really. Um, not going to save much on wages, but probably just an easy deal to do with, I'm sure, like buybacks and buyback clauses and sell-on percentages and whatnot, um, where the club's probably weighed it up and thought, he's decent, but he's not that good to make us think this would be a huge mistake we're going to regret, and we can put some stuff in the deal to make sure that if we if he was absolutely fantastic, we could buy him back at a reasonable price. And the likes of Lindelof and Maguire, who I would probably prefer us to get rid of, they're probably not easy to sell, particularly Maguire, because of the wage and because of his age as well, and, and you know what other clubs are going to pay you. A decent transfer fee and his wages so it's probably just an easy deal to do for the club so I kind of understand that but I you know I prefer a young player with some talent to stay and, and we don't have to have a one-year extension for a 36 37 year old but obviously the club have gone in that direction Um, I think it's quite obvious that I am quite skeptical about Ineos I think their intentions are much much better than the Glazers but in the short term at least I don't see an awful lot of difference yet and I that's a big word um, but I, I don't I think that the main people I mean and potentially even Sancho which which as I say appalls me Sancho Rashford the big they're not even, I don't even think they're big decisions to make but particularly Sancho isn't but They'll stay. McTominay, he'll stay. Maguire, he'll probably stay. I think we'll probably get rid of three or four, but they'll be the ones that are easy to get rid of who are probably good eggs. wan Bazaka, Kambala, um, there's even talk of Fernandez, which I tell you what, that that I, I don't even know. I don't know what idle threat I'm gonna make about that, but if, if Fernandez left, I just I don't know, I don't know what you go after that because 
the guy's the captain. He's he's the one that does have standards. He does continue to always give everything for the cause. He plays through injuries. He's never injured. He, he never misses a game through injury. So he, he's got to be playing through injuries. His dedication, his understanding of United, his goals, his assists, the fact he's a brilliant player. You know, I would be absolutely devoted if he, if devastated if he was to go. And I think again, it just it would look like a cost cutting exercise because we can get a few quid for him and he's thirty. Um, there's some some big issues within that squad that need to be dealt with, and it doesn't look like they're going to be. Things like the Euros and Copper America don't help. I would I would put that in as a mitigation. However, regardless of that, we knew those were on when we came into the summer, and they've let it pick up speed that this is going to be a big summer. This is going to be one where we're going to have a revolution. This one this thing we've needed for five six years it's going to happen. And I said before the end of the season, without wanting to sound like a smarty pants, it's not going to happen because we haven't got the people in position to make those things happen. And I think it's really difficult to get rid of some of these players off our books because of the mistakes of the previous regime giving them silly contracts. And other clubs, they're not that attractive to other clubs. Other clubs aren't going to go, oh yeah, let's go and spend 40 million on Scott McTominay and give him 250 grand a week, or that might be a bad example, or Maguire or whoever. Yeah, they're not going to do that. Um, and and the, most of them haven't been playing that well for the last two or three years. So I think Ten Hag's stuck with with the group that he's had previously and it's very difficult to get a different tune out of the same choir. So I think we'll probably sign three or four and we'll let go of three or four. But the three or four that we let go of, I don't think are going to be the ones we need to let go of. Um, Everything's fragmented again because of the, the Euros and the Copa America. So the pre season started. Played Rosenberg in a friendly last night. You're not going to read much into that because they've had a week of training and it's like three quarters of the squad aren't available. But you've, you can't have a proper preparation because of the, the international tournaments that have been going on. I, th I think, you know, that we've. It looks like they're trying to to address everything around the problem rather than the problem itself. In that, you know, we've got they've put two new coaches in to replace one. There's all this stuff going on in these important kind of in um, in between board and and and, and um, management positions. Uh, that football board type thing. But in terms of the, those new coaches, some of these players. I've been here for quite some time. Some of them have been here, and well, if you include Luke Shaw, there's, there's two that have been there since Van Gaal, but there's a few that have been there since Mourinho. But but even if you take that out of the equation, there's quite a lot of players now who've been there through Solskjaer, Ranić, Ten Hag over about a five year period, and have consistently proved that under each of those different personality managers, they've not been able to to do what we want them to do. They've been poor. So how is two different coaches going to make any difference to that. They might bring something different out of the group. They, they, they might, obviously they're going to spice up the dynamic a little bit, but if managers can't get a tune out of them, I'm not sure how a coach is going to do it. Um, and I, I, it's what I suspected. I just don't think we're going to do enough that we need to do this summer to see a sustainable change over the season. What's going to change with the injuries? You know, that's, that's a massive elephant in the room. We are coming towards the, the final third of, of July we're about I think less than a month away from the charity shield against City there's there's an awful lot to do and not a lot of time to do it and people who are still really unpacking their boxes in their office and trying to work stuff out so this summer because it's taken so long to get those people in it is, is, is for me bordering a write off or it's just much as it, ha as it has been before which is a huge disappointment and just stalls the progress. This this <laughs> fantasy that we're going to be competing in two or three years is is, is that it's a fantasy uh, because this year's just much of the same. I think the Southgate's one it, the Southgate thing is one to keep your eye on. I think um, I think Ten Hag's up against it a little bit here. So um, in terms of the videos over the summer, it's, uh, dis full disclosure: this is my least favourite time of the year as a football fan. I think the the media's full of bu full of bullshit. Silly season, um, thumbnails that are just complete clickbait uh, that hardly ever come true, friendlies that don't matter a jot. Um, so I'll, I suppose I'll just do videos as and when I move to do so, but 
I'm not going to be doing match reactions to friendlies and stuff like that unless again I'm moved to do so because something good's happened or bad or whatever. And obviously when signings are confirmed or exits are confirmed, potentially I might do something then. Um, good to be back. Up the Reds. And always, Glazers out.